Really impressed here with the performance of the Legion Go with this eGPU connected, but remember you can always use the iGPU in desktop mode also. Right now we're at 1440p high and this is performing absolutely amazingly. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out desktop mode on the all new Lenovo Legion Go. So I recently got my retail unit. I've actually done a couple videos on a prototype that Lenovo was kind enough to send over. If you're interested in checking those videos out, link for them will be down below. In those videos, we took a look at everything running on the internal screen. It's got a beautiful 8.8 inch, 144 hertz IPS display. But I wanted to see what we could do in desktop mode on the iGPU and with an eGPU connected over USB 4. Now, before we dive a bit deeper, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically, that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, first and foremost, this is meant to be a handheld, but we can always connect this to an external display, either using a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter, or if you've got a monitor or display that supports USB Type-C video in, you can always connect it like that. But we've also got USB 4, so we can easily connect an external GPU to this device and get much better GPU performance out of it. When it comes to the CPU or APU that they opted to use here, it's the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. This does have that 12CU RDNA 3 based iGPU and you know on the internal screen gaming on the go it's actually a really great performer. Actually the most powerful iGPU on the market right now. But we can definitely get a lot more out of this over USB 4. And with USB 4 it is compatible with Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 eGPU docks. First things first, let's go ahead and connect this to an external monitor. So uh, the monitor that I have here is actually a 4K HDR display with USB Type-C video in. It also does 65 watt fast charging out. So while it's plugged in here, we can actually charge up the Go and get video out. Takes a second for this monitor to register. And once it does, we've got the larger external display and we can also use the internal display on the Legion Go. As you can see, we're just mirroring the screen right now. The Legion Go itself has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. Most monitors on the market right now are going to be 16 by 9. Obviously, we've got some widescreen formats out there and everything like that. But this is a 16 by 9 monitor. So as you can see, we've got those cutoff bars on the side. Now, it's really easy to go ahead and fix this. We can actually just change the resolution. And personally, what I like to do is completely swap over to the external display. So now we're at 1080p, and that's because we're on the iGPU. But once we get an eGPU in here, we're going to go up to uh, 1440p and even 4K to see how this thing performs. And one of the main things a lot of people have been talking about with the Legion Go is uh, FPS mode. So we've got detachable controllers. And basically, the way this works is we're going to use this kind of like a mouse. And I've got Cyberpunk 2077 up and running right now. We're at 1080p low settings, and I do have some FSR on. We can get an average of around 78 FPS. It does work out really well for an iGPU, and it's fully playable. Overall, I mean, if you wanted to use this as your everyday desktop, you could definitely get some gaming out of the way. You can always connect an external keyboard and mouse. Media consumption, like 4K video playback, works out really well on the Z1 Extreme. Uh, photo editing, some light video editing. Overall, I mean, we've basically got a PC here. You could use the internal screen for everything you need if you want to, but if you want to go up to a larger display, it's really easy to do so. And you're going to get the same kind of performance on this external display as you would with the internal screen. The AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme is a great performer, one of my favorite APUs on the market right now. But in dock mode, some people might want a little more performance, and it's actually easy to add, but you will need an external GPU. 
we're going to be testing a couple, and the first one here is the GPD G1. This external graphics card is my favorite one on the market right now. We've got a Radeon RX 7600 MXT with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, and we can do 1440p gaming with this external GPU. Another thing we have here is actually an Oculink port. Now we're not going to be using the Oculink port for the Legion Go, we're going to be using the USB 4 port, also compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. It's an awesome little external GPU because we don't need an external power supply, it's all built in to this small form factor eGPU. And getting it all connected is really easy. From the eGPU, we've got HDMI or DisplayPort going to our monitor. We've also got power from the wall coming to the eGPU. And we need this single USB 4 cable. And with this, it's also going to charge the Legion Go while we're all plugged in. And there we have it. I've been testing this a little bit, so I've got it set up to just go directly to that external monitor. But as you can see, Z1 Extreme, and we've got the Radeon RX 7600 MXT. Really awesome performance here, and yeah, it will do 1440p, but we'll need to enable some FSR. I consider this a 1080p Ultra or a 1440p high card. Here we have God of War, 1440p, high with FSR set to balanced. Like I mentioned, we could do this game at 1080 Ultra with no FSR, but I wanted to go up to 1440p. And uh, to tell you the truth, I do think this looks absolutely amazing. We're getting an average of around 72 FPS with this game. And of course, we have to test out Cyberpunk 2077 on this eGPU. And uh, if you remember, we were able to run this on the iGPU 1080p low with some FSR. Did a pretty good job, but now we're at 1440p high with FSR set to balanced. So yeah, connecting an eGPU, be it Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4 to the Legion Go really opens it up. And something like this 7600 MXT really does open this up on the GPU side of things. But there's one more eGPU that I wanted to test with the Legion Go. And it might look like a monstrosity, and that's really because it is. What we've got here is a water-cooled RTX 4090 and a Razor Core dock that's been modified for everything to fit. I've also added an 850 watt power supply because the 4090 does pull a lot of wattage. But I was really interested to see how this performed with the Legion Go. And of course, we will be bottlenecked by the CPU, but more so, we're going to be bottlenecked by the uh, bandwidth that USB 4 can provide. Either way, I think we're going to get a nice jump in performance. And heading into Task Manager, you see we've got that Ryzen Z1 Extreme. We've still got access to the uh, RDNA 3 iGPU, but instead of using that, we're going to be using the RTX 4090. Fans aren't spinning on the 4090 right now because it's not hot enough, but if I head into Afterburner here, you can see I can adjust everything I need to. I can take that power limit up. But for this setup here, I'm going to leave it at the stock power limit. I think uh, we're already going to see some great performance. And the first game that I want to test here is Forza Motorsports. If you've ever tried to run this game on an iGPU or even a lower-end GPU in a desktop PC, you know how hard it can be to run. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So far, not too bad. We're actually at 4K Ultra. I've got Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner so we can see everything that's going on. And this RTX 4090 would give us much better performance if it was in a desktop with a full-speed PCIe X16 slot. But we're running over USB 4, which only does up to 40 gigs. But with the bandwidth we have here, it's definitely capable of running this game at 4K Ultra paired up with that uh, Ryzen Z1 Extreme. Now, if we tried to run this at 4K Ultra on the iGPU with that Z1 Extreme, we'd get around 2 FPS. It's just not going to do it. So, yeah, I mean, we're definitely adding a lot of GPU performance. But, again, this is really overkill. You don't need a 4090 connected to this. An RTX 3060 is kind of my go-to if you're going to be using an external dock like this, or even that GPD G1. Like I mentioned, that is my favorite external GPU right now. It's got all that I.O. built in, and it's a really portable little system. Next game I wanted to test out was God of War, and we're at 4K Ultra. I got an average of 98 FPS, and again, we've got Afterburner running. You can see that we are at 30 watts on that Ryzen Z1 Extreme. And this kind of maxes out at 30 watts in the Legion Go. Of course, you could use a third-party application to take it up, but I think uh, it's offering more than enough right now for these games. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 4K Ultra. Now, when we start moving really fast, you'll see it dip into the mid-60s. 
that's really the bandwidth there for that GPU. We don't have much to work with when you compare it to what this thing can really put out. So with a game like this, what I usually like to do is just turn V-Sync on, kind of lock it right there at 60, 4K Ultra, and I can play it all day on the Legion Go with this RTX 4090 connected. So overall, I've been having a great time with the Legion Go in handheld mode, desktop mode, with external GPUs connected. I've been trying to throw everything I can at this. And like I mentioned, I do have a couple other videos, so if you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave links down below. But I've got a few more planned. Next one I think is going to be a full emulation showcase, so if you're interested in checking that out, make sure you stay tuned to the channel. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, and yeah, you can definitely use the Legion Go as a desktop PC, and you really don't even need an eGPU. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe picking one up, I'll leave some links in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.